Hello and welcome. Hope you're all having a great day. So I'm here with more updates. As you know, Prince Harry gave a very revelatory talk in an ITV documentary on tabloid lawsuits. But he also touched on something that has stood out, talking about Meghan and the UK. In ITV's deep dive documentary, Tabloids on Trial, which aired in the UK on Thursday night, the Duke of Sussex was among a myriad of names, including Hugh Grant, former England football star Paul Gascoigne, and ex-Prime Minister Gordon Brown, who opened up about their fight for justice in the extensive phone hacking scandal and subsequent legal battles. Prince Harry spoke about how he was allegedly targeted by journalists and private investigators working for NGN news group newspapers, titles The Sun, and the now defunct News of the World, which closed in 2011. Grant was also among those involved in the NGN lawsuits. He settled his illegal snooping case last month after steep legal costs forced his hand, he revealed in the documentary. So, of particular interest, Prince Harry did speak this and said, quote, I'm trying to get justice for everybody. This is a David vs. Goliath situation. The Davids are the claimants and the Goliath is this vast media enterprise, end quote. And he also said when he was asked about his December 2023 win against MGN, he said, quote, I did feel vindicated. Phone hacking has been going on for a long time. There's a huge amount that has come to light now that people and the British public specifically had no idea about, end quote. So Harry talked about Meghan in particular. So let's get to that. And as we know, it's been quite a long time long time since Meghan crossed the Atlantic and you know actually got to stay in the UK and Harry's opening up about why the prospect of bringing Meghan and his children Archie and Lilibet to his home country seems to be a risk. Commenting on whether or not the documentary and the court case were bringing him more unwanted attention Harry said quote there is more than enough attention on me and my wife anyway end quote. He added, quote, they pushed me too far. It got to a point where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But I don't think there's anybody in the world better suited and better placed to be able to see this through than myself, end quote. And then he went on to say that he was concerned for the safety of his family and that all it took was one person with the wrong intentions to put everyone in danger. And anyone keeping up with the royal family knows that Harry requested a security detail for himself and his family when visiting the UK and that his proposal had been turned down. So he said this, quote, It's still dangerous and all it takes is one lone actor, one person who reads this stuff to act on what they've read. And whether it's a knife or acid, whatever it is, and these are things that are of genuine concern for me, it's one of the reasons I won't bring my wife back to this country, end quote. Wow, isn't that interesting? He finally just, you know, put the cards on the table. And that's such a good explanation as well. Roping in the coverage that has been going on, especially as we talk about Megan particularly. How sometimes the press have twisted things about her, the tabloid press. Of course, this documentary was about the phone hacking and all of that. But the fact is, when he says that they pushed him too far, I mean, come on. It is undeniable how Megan had been put in such a difficult position through the coverage on her. There was always a story about how you know she had done this allegedly or done that or made someone cry or disrespected the queen or, you know, done this, that and the other to turn the public against her. And, you know, Megan spoke about that, how she felt like she was being thrown to the wolves. And for those who say that it was just all roses for her when she went there, it's not true. Right up to the day of her wedding. With some positive coverage, there was also the undeniable negative side where they flew out her estranged relatives to basically cause some upset to her um, leading up to the wedding. And, you know, just all those stories that were coming out in the press. And it did make some people turn against her. And I think 
it's quite interesting that some individuals, when you ask them what specifically she had done, and this is way before they stepped back from, from being senior working royals, they couldn't exactly point to what they don't like about her. So it just shows about the pervasiveness and the insidious nature of some type of coverage that we've been seeing against Meghan had truly had such a negative impact on her and on her mental well-being at the time. So Harry is correct. He says it is still dangerous. And as he said, it only takes one lone actor. So, you know, back to that, they do need the police protection around the clock when they are in the UK. I think that just goes without saying. They are high profile. Prince Harry is in the line of succession. So are his children. His wife is a duchess who has been threatened before. So, you know, it just kind of goes without saying. So the article here goes on to talk about uh, Prince Harry saying how he alleged that his voicemails were intercepted and flight records were blagged. Of course, that term meaning information was obtained dishonestly, among other enormous invasions of his privacy. Harry said, quote, it felt like harassment. It felt horrible then. It feels horrible now, end quote. And as mentioned yesterday, he did discuss how the taking the tabloids to court had caused a rift between him and his family. But he said that he saw the fight as necessary for his wife, Megan, and their children, saying, quote, It is clear now to everybody that the risk of taking on the press and the risk of such retaliation from them taking these claims forward, it's clearly not in, as in the royal family's interests, to do that. It's clear from the last four years with my wife and children, end quote. And as I said before, he said that they had pushed him too far and it got to that point where I think he just had to go forward with this. What do you think about that? I think it is so interesting that he acknowledges that the position that he is in makes him so well placed to take on such a huge entity as the press, especially those who are so irresponsible in the way they gather information and spread it respect to Harry for taking on such a huge entity as the press. Uh, it is something that we commend him for. It takes tremendous courage as well because we have seen the retaliation against him and Meghan uh, for taking them on. For sure, I think that from the beginning when Harry and Meghan decided to just stand up for what was right, all the way from when Meghan said it was wrong to have her private letter published on the front pages and she said no, they were going to take them to court. I think that they just did not understand that Harry and Meghan had drawn a line in the sand and they said that the positions they were in did not make them fair game for unacceptable behavior from the press. Wearing tiaras and crowns and having titles like Duchess and Duke and on and on, it's not a go ahead for them to be, you know, mistreated and used and commodified by, you know, those segments of the press. So absolutely, we say respect to Harry and those who are a part of the court cases as well. We saw in various clips how others were so impacted by what had happened. And as Harry said, he's trying to get justice for everyone. Also, Hugh Grant spoke about his own experiences with the press, saying that his flat was burgled, microphones were put in his window boxes and dropped into his car, and medical records of him and the mothers of his children were stolen from NHS databases, saying, quote, these people live above the law and the police. In that day, they were as dangerous as the reporters because the Metropolitan Police just got straight on the phone to the tabloids and tipped them off." End quote. So yes, it does show how pervasive the corruption was at that time. And as I mentioned before, Grant settled out of court, which he said he believed implied guilt on behalf of the parties, saying, quote, if you're innocent, why do you shove so much money at someone so you don't have to go to court, end quote. And the documentary as well covered the 2012 Levison Inquiry, a judicial public inquiry into the phone hacking scandal that saw Murdoch himself, an ex-editor of News of the World, Piers Morgan, sworn in and grilled. But Barry reported that the tabloids often chalked much of the wrongdoing to rogue reporters, in quotes, and denied the practice was widespread. However, an ex-reporter for one of the newspapers told ITV that the phone hacking was, quote, almost an industry standard technique, end quote. And he gave an example where some of them pretended to be members of Bob Geldof's team to get a bill from a French hotel. 
They called all the numbers on it, he said, to work out who Geldof's new girlfriend was. So the documentary also covered accusations of a cover-up, including that thousands of emails before 2004 were deleted from NGN servers. The company maintained that this was a, quote, long scheduled, in quotes, cleared out of their systems and no cover-up took place. Harry hopes his trial will begin as early as next year. So, of course, here I have to say standardly that NGN has continued to refute unlawful activity occurred. And a spokesperson for MGN said when the Prince won his claim against the group, quote, We are pleased to have reached this agreement, which gives our business further clarity to move forward from events that took place many years ago and for which we have apologized, end quote. So a lot has been covered here. Share your thoughts on Harry saying he did not feel safe bringing Meghan back to the UK. And remember, we've just had that recent announcement that the Invictus Games 2027 will be hosted in Birmingham, UK. And we've been all speculating on whether Harry, Meghan and uh, the children will make the trip. So share your thoughts on that as well. I would love to know your thoughts. So thank you all for watching. And as always, before we log off, allow me here to thank those of you who support this channel financially and shout out a couple of you here by name. A very, very special thank you to you. Black Pearl, thank you for choosing to accompany me here on this YouTube journey. I appreciate you for the kindness and love that you have shown to me and to all of us here on this channel. So happy and blessed to know you. Thank you. A very special thank you as well to you, Lauren Hamburg. Thank you for your generosity and for giving to this channel as well as the love that you've continued to show. You are precious and so valued to me. I see you and I appreciate you. Thank you. May God bless you and yours. Once again, thank you to all who support this channel financially. You mean so much to me. And if you liked this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Appreciate you all who do. Once again, sound off in the comment section below. I would love to know your thoughts. If you liked this one, give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. It truly does help out the channel. And follow on Twitter or X. I'd love to see you on there as well. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a blessed one.